Psalm 43 says, God is our refuge and strength, the never-present trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose stream made glad the city of God, the place where the most holy dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at daybreak. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He, he lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted among the earth. Sometimes life is so hectic and there's so many crazy things going on in this world that we forget one important thing, to be still and know that I am God. There's a great uh, music director and uh, he's, he, used to, he used to teach where if you got off a key, he, he, he would stop flapping his arms and you got off the rhythm and the, the orchestra's going all over the place, he would, his movements would become slower and slower and less slower because he had to focus in on him because he was the one who was teaching the tempo. And sometimes in our lives, the tempo is so out of whack, sometimes we need to be still. This morning, to start our service, close your eyes and just remove the distraction of life. The junk on television that we've had to witness, the pain of life. God, when we come into this place, sometimes we need to just be still. And just for an hour, I'm going to leave the world to itself. And we're not going to stress out about anything. We're not going to worry about anything. We're not going to fear anything. We're just going to be quiet and know that you are God. And watch your wonder awaken us. Your name, Amen. Good morning. How you doing today? Awesome. God is doing amazing things in, in, in a lot of people's life. There's an amazing thing that occurring right now, right this moment. There is somebody who is in this church that's never been in church ever in their entire life. Have never darkened the doors of this is their very first worship service their whole life. They've never been in church. Wow. And his name is Micah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's here for the first time. And he's little. Yeah. You need to let Jamie hold him because um, I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> you stand up. Stay. If you haven't seen the little one, stand up. Uh, if you're going to coo all over him, please do coo all over him. And... Uh, Wear a mask if you get close to him, so uh, he doesn't get germs. Okay. You can sit down now. <laughs> he is cute. He is adorable. We're glad that he came into this world very healthy, and uh, we will continue to pray as we watch him grow and develop into a child of God. And it, 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 it's so exciting the the, the we. We have, we have another one on its way in about six weeks, a uh, little, um, I don't know what little, whatever, 
Huh? Little, the little, oh, oh, little Joshua <laughs> is going to be here. Um, hey, there was a there was a time where you just picked out a boy's name and a girl's name, and you and 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 you hope for the best, and then you 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 never you never knew. You, there was no way of ever knowing. Nowadays, they have these gender revealing. <laughs> it's a boy. It's a girl. It's it's Superman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> This morning, I want you to know that I, I am just, I'm just making this statement. Um, uh, I said something a while back, uh, and they lost, <laughs> and um, miserably. And uh, I even wore a, a brown sh shirt one time. For the only game I, want, I, I, I wore a brown shirt, and they lost. So, <laughs> so there's no brown shirt. There, there's, there's no saying anything about anything, because... I don't believe in superstition. I just don't want to jinx them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, did you hear this from this man? Okay, he's the one who sits there and brags that he's from Ohio and he's a this and he's this fan, he's that fan. No, no, never again because the words came out of his mouth in public. You're all witnesses. This man is not an Ohioan. <laughs> Yep, you just you just blew it. <laughs> he, 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 you. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm glad you're here this morning, and uh, God's going to do some amazing things this morning, and we're going to have a time of celebration, and we just want to put out the world and leave it out there because we spend too much time in it. And this morning, we come to be in the presence of God, yes. and we're going we're gonna to just learn from God, and we're going to have an amazing time. We're going to start singing, and God is going to do amazing things. I praise the hallelujah in the presence of my enemy.
I want you to open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43. Timothy in just a moment is going to read that for us. Isaiah 43. There's something I did forget uh, to, to mention to you. If you're having trouble reading the videos that we are having in the, mo in the beginning, if you notice that there is a, if you can't see it on this one, but especially when words are up there. Can, Raymond, put the first set of scripture up first verses, you'll see a yellow arc. We have no idea why that's occurring. And uh, that yellow arc is causing some portions of videos to blur out. We can't, we don't know. Now see, the, see where it says water, 17, who? You see how that's yellow? That's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be white. And we're not sure why that's doing it. That's, and I didn't realize what it was doing, but it's causing our videos to blur a little bit. Uh, or, or, or white out a little bit, and um, uh, we are trying to, we're, we haven't been able to, to, to do anything to fix it, we have, because we just found it during Christmas, yes? I did already, yeah, the front, the front lights didn't, didn't fix it, no, no, all you need is a front one, thank you, Debbie, <laughs> well, we're good, <laughs> yes, I am. Now, the, the turning all the lights off, the question that was asked for those who are online, 
Whereas if we turned all the lights off in the sanctuary, would that work? No, because it, the lighting is behind the, the beam. The lights are in front of the beam. If you turn those lights off, it didn't fix it. So, um, so we're, we will look at it one day. Bear with us on that little one. And um, I, I appreciate that you do. Also, I just want to point out that, yes, as much as we try not to make mistakes and repeat mistakes, uh, we do often. Okay, that's why I was singing on the, uh, 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 again, I guess, and my daughter had to come and whisper in my ear. And then, and then I know some of you were like, please take that mask off. Please, it's hanging. Okay, just take it off. Just do something. And you couldn't, you couldn't pay attention to me because that mask. And, you know, I should have known. I, last time that happened, it got hooked up into my earpiece and I couldn't get it out. And, and of course, we love repeating mistakes. And we're going to talk about that today. Timothy's going to read from Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 21. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and then let, and let, they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up and do not... Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness, and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. A people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. I was riding into a town, and he was really thirsty, so he stopped by a... Uh, a soda shop to get a Pepsi. <laughs> Unfortunately, this town had a. Yeah, yeah, that would have been better. Yeah, thank you. He stopped in a soda, soda shop to get a root beer. And unfortunately, this local town had a habit of pranking strangers that came in, and, and, and which he was one. And he went into the soda shop and he was drinking his root beer. And he found, when he left, he found out that his horse had been stolen. So he got very upset. And he goes back into the soda shop and handily flips his gun into the air, catching it above his head and firing a shot into the ceiling. And he yells at everybody, which one of you horned rattlesnakes, which is a sidewinder, <laughs> stole my horse? No one answered. All right, he continued, I'm going to have another root beer. And it, if my horse ain't back outside by the time I finish, I'm going to do what I done did do in Texas. <laughs> and I don't like to have to do what I done did do does in Texas. The man went into the soda shop and had another root beer. Walked outside, and his horse was back. And he gets up on his saddle, gets all ready, and begins to drive right out of town. When the soda tender wandered out of and, uh, outside the shop and yells, Hey, cowboy, what happened in Texas? And the cowboy turned back and said, I had to walk home. Yeah, I got that really. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes in our lives, fear causes us to do things differently. We do something, we do something wrong when we were a child. We do something wrong, and that really taught us. We did something not thinking that it was wrong, and we did found out quickly that we will never do that again. Fear makes us do different things. Uh, when I was uh, in, we had junior high and senior high school back then uh, when I was a kid. And I think I was in the eighth or ninth grade. Ninth grade was part of junior high. <laughs> and in those days, we rode buses. When we rode buses to school back in Cleveland, Ohio, when we rode buses, we rode the city buses to school. So we didn't have these yellow buses that came in. We were on the city uh, timeline, and you had to pick up a bus at a certain time, so when the city bus came in, you could call, crawl onto the bus, and it, it would take you down and around the route and everything. And what you did is you bought bus tickets for the week, bef 
going into that week. On Friday, you'd buy bus tickets for the next week. It was Friday. I get to school a little bit early because you had to get to school early to buy your bus tickets. Now, get this. Get this, people. Ten cents a ride. Okay. They had little bus, little bus tickets and everything, and you put them in the little thing. And we even tried to cheat. Not me, because I would never do something like that. We even tried to cheat the 10 cents out of the bus driver because, you know, that was a lot of money back then. So this day, they would, they, you usually had a strip of 10 tickets, one for the trip to school, one for the trip home. And uh, you go in, put your dollar down, they rip off a strip, give it to you. And one day, on this particular Friday, they had a new person giving it out, giving out the bus tickets. And instead of giving out a strip, they were giving out the entire book. Well, us first people in line knew bonanza. <laughs> we were getting nine, t we were getting ten strips of bus tickets for a buck. And this was, this was like ten weeks, nine weeks of free bus rides. And so we all left. We were snickering. We, 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 us kids all knew what was going on. Obviously, none of the kids said anything. And all of a sudden, they ran out of bus tickets. <gasps> oh, no. We get in the homeroom, and we hear the ding dong. And this is an announcement. For those kids who bought bus tickets at the beginning of school, would you please come bring your bus tickets back to the office? A mistake was made, and we need to change them. And we, we weren't dumb. <coughs> we knew exactly what had happened. We <laughs> nobody was going to be taking those bus tickets back. There's no way, because we weren't dumb. We knew what happened. We knew that there wasn't a wrong bus ticket distributed. We just knew that they gave us out too many. So first, I, and I had, I had a pack of those tickets. So, I, I, and I knew it was going to happen. So I tossed my tickets into the, my locker, and I'm like, this is so cool. I ain't turning those in. <laughs> and the first period goes by, second period goes by. Third period, I get a pink slip. It's a summons to the office. Please come to the office after third period. All third period, everything inside of me turned liquid. <laughs> I couldn't concentrate. I didn't know what was going on. And I just sat there worrying, oh, no, they caught me. What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this one? Because oh, well, so I, 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 I dreamt up a scheme, go to my locker, get the bus tickets, and I get down there and make up some story. What story should I make up? I don't know. Make up a story. So I go down there with my little slip. I go to my locker, grab the bus tickets. I go down to the office. I walk up, and I said, I've been summoned. And they said, okay, um, sit down. I sat down. Oh, by the way, I forgot that I had these. <laughs> I didn't know how to lie. I forgot that I had these. I need to return them. Secretary takes them, goes back to her desk, rips them off, hands it to me. She's sitting there. Excuse me, Raymond, what? Did you think we summoned you to the office for the bus tickets? No, 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 this is something totally different. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> okay. Fear makes you do things that you normally wouldn't do. You know, so chances are pretty good. By the time I would have gotten home with those bus tickets, I, my mother would have probably found out about them because I swore my mother knew everything. I'd have probably have returned them Monday morning. So those who, those who were thinking, oh, pastor is going to steal bus tickets, we're going to deal with that topic here in our in our message, okay? Because because there 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 are certain things about our lives that we don't tell people. See, fear. Fear is, is, a, is a weird thing. It makes us do things that we don't necessarily do. And, and fear is, is very confusing, especially when you, read, when you read about fear in the Bible. As you know, I, I, I look at the scriptures, and as, as, as it, it's very well known that I talk about what is really being said in this passage of scripture. They're using this particular word for a reason. The word that they used here is, means this. There's a deeper meaning to this word. There's a reason why they're using this particular word. For example, in the Greek language, they have, th they have a, 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 a word for agape. They have a word for uh, philo and eros. And all three of those types of love 
means something different. You have brotherly love, you have marital love, and you have Christian love, okay? And they all mean something different. They use those words to, depending on what you, the t context of, the, of what you're saying, they will use one of those words. Or, diff or there's even other forms of love in Greek. In our language, we use one. Greek language and Hebrew language, very, descri very descriptive languages. They have a lot of words we in the English don't. We love our dog, we love our pizzas, and we love our spouses. And I hope that that's not the same love for all three. Okay. <laughs> you know, <coughs> you don't have the same love for your spouse that you have for your pizza, but you use the same word. We have it in context. They use actual words. That's why we go back and try to understand what the author is trying to say. But the word for fear in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is a very difficult word to understand to understand what is being used, because in the Old Testament, the fear, in the Old Testament, fear was a feeling or a dread. I have this dread, this feeling. And when and Isaiah talks to Israel and he says, do not fear, it's basically saying, do not have a dread. Do not have this, be afraid of anything. Do not have this inner feeling that something horrible is going to happen that causes you to make changes in your life. Do not be afraid. But the problem is, the same word that they use here in, in, in Isaiah 43 that we've been talking about is the same word that they use to fear God. We need to fear God. I need to dread God? No, it's a reverence. But you, it's the feeling of dread. It's that deep emotion that you're supposed to have towards God. So when you fear God, it's a reverence. It's a deep emotional reference, re reverence that you have towards God, just like you have this deep emotional fear. Just like when you say to your dog, what do you do? And they, they have a fear. It's the same in the Greek language. In the Greek language, the word for fear is phobia. And when and 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 here here here's here's how it, here's how it's difficult even in the in the New Testament, First John four eighteen, in the New Testament the word fear means phobia, so we get our word phobia fear of, in our language, that's where it came from, in John one First John one four eighteen it says there is no fear, phobia in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears, phobia, is not made in perfect love. Agape. Okay? 1 Peter 2.17 says, Show proper res respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear, phobia, God. Honor the emperor. They're having the same fear phobia that they're saying don't fear that John is telling us but yet the letters to Peter Peter's letters is don't fear God phobia same word don't be pure perfect love drives out fear where there is fear there is no love so how can I fear God without loving God and we have a real problem with this because the problem we have with this whole concept of fear and love in the Bible and this reference and, 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 and all that is that we have been taught most of our life to be afraid of God. And I have been in this church for 20 plus, 20 plus years now, okay, <laughs> 20 years plus months. And the hardest idea to get you to change your understanding is not to be afraid of God, but to be in a love relationship with him. Because it's the love relationship that is the whole meaning of the Bible, not to sit there and be afraid of God that, oh, no, what am I going to do? I have all these bus tickets in my locker. God's going to get me because he already found me out by sending a pink slip 
because I, and this is what was going through my mind because that ninth grade I was beginning to switch over from from a non-Christian kid into a Christian kid. I was uh, that summer I'd be called into the ministry and everything, and 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 I'm sitting there. God found me out, and that's why he, he sent the pink slip down, because he told every, because that's what we're taught. He told everybody in that office who got it. I was recognized, and we have this fear. It's not easy to say that fear is good or bad, and send someone home to live out a fearless life because there are some things about fear or being afraid of in our language that is okay. There is a dog who is 200 pounds running after me, growling his teeth. I am not going to sit there and say, I'm fearless. God is going to take care of me. Okay? It, that's not part of it. Or, or you know, it, when, when, when you're laying in bed and the wind is blowing and it sounds like a freight train going in between your house and you hear, this is what happens when we have big winds on our hill, okay? They're like a freight train and you're up half the night and you hear your house creaking, there's a little bit of fear as to whether that house is going to stay up or not. There is some fear that is good that is just naturally a part of us. But there is fear that isn't good. And last week we talked about three reasons why. Three reasons why we fear. And that we reasons why we fear is because of distrust, because of worry, and because we fear because it's a control mechanism. It's the way we control society, we control the uh, people. These three reasons why we fear, I think, comes from what we fear. And there is one thing that all of us fear, and we don't sometimes realize it. Yes, Mike. Yes. Yes, that's a rational thing to fear. That is very right. I'm not, uh, my whole point here is not to say that this concern or fear or worry or whatever you want to call it, it's not, there's not a good component to it. It's how we live our lives. If I live, so here, here's, here's an example. Here's an example. My mother-in-law, <laughs> I love my mother-in-law. She's going to be listening to this too. <laughs> my, here, 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 sorry, mom-in-law, but I, this is a great example of it, okay? No, she's going to she's gonna call me up and yell at me. But I'm going to tell you anyways. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> and I'm going <coughs> to tell you anyways. My mother-in-law, a few years ago, a while back, got into a little bit of an argument because as we were leaving the house to go do something, I left all the fans in the house running. Okay? Because I have no fear that the fan is going to short out, burn down the house. Well, she knows somebody in which, or she knows something how... Uh, that a house could possibly burn down, or she knows somebody who's lost their house because they left a fan out, it shorted out and burned down. I, my fan is running in my living room right now, keeping the air moving in my house, and I'm not worried about it burning down. Now, an irrational fear is I have to check all the outlets every day to make sure that there is nothing wrong with them in all the electrical part components that are running without me being there thinking that it's going to burn down my house. Seeing a spark come out of a light, light switch means I should do something about that because <laughs> that light switch is going bad. Leaving my fan on is not a rational fear. It's thinking that my house is going to burn down because I left something. There are things that are running, and this is the argument that we have. There are things that are running in our house that we don't know about that a fan isn't going to burn it down. I say that she has an irrational fear, and, and she says that I'm stupid. She doesn't say that. <laughs> I'm not going to put words in her mouth. I'm going to really get into trouble for this one. <laughs> That's okay. That's, she, she doesn't understand. I can't have an irrational fear of life because I'm worried that something's going to happen as opposed to a, re a reasonable fear that that dog is running towards me. I think I need to go. So it's not why we fear, it's what we fear. 
and we have to learn about what we fear. Okay? The thing that we fear the most in our life over everything is time. We fear time. We are afraid of time. I don't have enough time. The time has gone. 25 years ago, I welcomed this beautiful little girl into this world. As small as, as Micah is. Innocent, pure, wonderful. Welcomed in her into this world. 25 years later, she's living in Boston, Massachusetts on her own, having her own life. Where did the time go? When she was born, one of my friends said, enjoy it now because you'll wake up one day and she'll be gone. And I'm like, I can't be afraid because we live our day frantically because we don't have enough time. How much time do I have left? Oh, look at how much time has been gone. When I came to this church, I was 35 years old. I'm only 45 because it takes two years for me to age. I was 35 years old when I came. I woke up this morning and somehow I am now 56 and have been the pastor of this church for 20 years. Where did the time go? We fear the future because we don't know what it's going to bring. We fear the present because these are, un, what do they call them? Unprecedented times. And we fear the past because we can't bring it back. So we are afraid of time. Time is what we, are, what we fear. And, because, and, and we fe we, time is what we fear. And this distrust, the control, and, and those types of fear and, and, and relational issues, those are why we fear because we fear time. Tanya and I have, you know, <laughs> 56 years old. Uh, Timothy and I were at uh, Eaton Park Friday. <laughs> he loved it. I kicked him three times and punched him in the nose. A lady comes up and says, look, there's the senior menu. I said, I am not paying the senior price. I, am I was offended, in fact, that she looked at me and says, <laughs> you're over 55. Okay, there's nothing on my shirt that says that. Okay, you know, and she assumed that I'm over 55 when I'm only 40. I just gray early. And she says, yeah, you, 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 you should be on the senior member. I, I argued with her whether I am not paying the senior menu price because I am not a senior yet. Okay, I, and she charged me the senior price for my, my meal because she says, I'm going to give it to you anyways at the senior price because you're a senior adult. I'm like, <sighs> where did the time go? that now I am considered a senior adult. All right, all right, all right, okay, you guys can all be quiet. <laughs> there, I heard the murmuring. <laughs> we fear the past because of a few things. We fear the past because people might find out about our past. We fear time because we are infinite beings. That's why we fear time. And we fear the past, we fear the future, and we fear the present. And we're going to talk about these three. Not today, but over the next three weeks. We fear the past because people might find out about the past. Hey, one thing I know about being a pastor, which, which is kind of cool, is we all have secrets. I have a lot of secrets about all you guys. I want you to know you get mad at me. I'm just going to publish my book of secrets and mess up all your lives. Okay? We all have secrets. Hey. <laughs> what, I'm sorry? Yeah, my pick could be. <laughs> just going to let you know your pastor has secrets. I'm going to let you in on a secret. I have secrets. We all do. Everyone here has done something in their lives that they did not, that, that they did something in their lives that they are not proud of, and they don't want anybody to know about it. 
There are things in my life I've done that Tanya will never know. I'm not proud of them. Why should I tell her? I'm not going to go down my whole book and say before we got married, okay, this is all the things I've done wrong. Do you still love me? She's supposed to love me for whatever who I am, for who I am at that time. We all have secrets. We have all hide them. We don't want people to know. When people or feelings or memories come into our heads, these secrets raise their nasty head. And we are afraid that somehow it may get out. Somehow somebody might find out that I took bus tickets. And what happens if they find out that I took bus tickets? You've been called by God and you did what? We all have secrets. <laughs> so we spend our life keeping the secrets quiet. Because once people learn our secrets, they're going to judge us. So we don't tell people our secrets. Because they're going to because the people who have secrets are going to judge us about our secrets. You call yourself a man or woman of God and this is the way you acted. So we don't you guys know don't know what what happens in our house. Because it's a secret. Sometimes Tanya and I will have arguments. I may have yelled at her. <gasps> I may have had a bad. We don't tell people about this. What do we do? We come to church, put on our smiley face, and leave all of our secrets at home. We fear the past because there are secrets in the past. Now, I'm not saying that we're supposed to all get together and share all of our secrets because if you do, I, I, w one of two things. If you share your secrets, so we had this kind of meeting and everything, one of two things will happen with me. One, it'll be, I didn't know that. <laughs> and I'll write it down. Two, it's like, oh, come on, move on. I already knew that. <laughs> the whole idea is Christians in the early church, Christians were able to get together and tell their secrets and their struggles without being judged or condemned or saying, you need counseling or you need this. Oh, I'm concerned. There is, there is a place where we should be keeping our secrets quiet because people can't handle them, and that's okay. A journal is fine. Just don't let anybody read it. <laughs> Secondly, we're afraid of the past because the past might repeat itself. And we're afraid that our past mistakes might repeat and we don't want them to repeat. So we are very cautious about what we do and how we do things and what we say because we don't want the past to repeat ourselves. So we are afraid of our past, the mistakes that we made, because we don't want to repeat them. And the third thing is the pain was too much to manage. The pain of the past, of those secrets, was too much to manage. Whether I caused them myself or something else caused them or there was innocent pain, okay, that happened just because we live in a world that is painful, but it caused me pain and I'm afraid that that pain may come back and I'm afraid of the past because of the pain of the past. I don't want to relieve that, relive that pain. I don't want to have to go through it. So each day we wake up fearful that the past is going to repeat itself and we have to live in that same pain again because we live in a society that says pain is bad. So in Isaiah 43, Isaiah writes the words of God to Israel and he talks and God is talking through is Isaiah about the past. And God and, and God, uh, Isaiah writes this. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. God brings out the details of the memories of what he has done in Israel to show to kind of show them what is happening. Now, we talked about Isaiah 43 last week, and I showed you that there was three things that God was going to do for Israel, that God, 
He, he, he's with us through the water. He takes care of us so that we're not swept away and we don't get burned in the fire. I'm going to show you a little nuance to, to, um, uh, to Hebrew poetry. And this is the reason why pastors always, always do things in threes, okay? It's right here. It's, it's a godly thing. God does it, okay? This is what Isaiah says. He says, look, this is what God writes through Isaiah. He says, wasn't there another one? Okay, it might be stuck there. That's okay. God says, this is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the seas passes through waters. He made a way through the seas. He makes a way through the water, a path through the mighty waters, the rivers that will overcome us. So in this threefold sequence, you can read from Isaiah 1 how this threefold sequence is repeating itself, how God promises God is going to do and see this is what God did. It's a threefold sequence here. And then finally, he says, um, uh, extinguish, snuffed out like a wick. That the fire you're going through is going to be extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. What God is saying here in, in Isaiah 43, he says, this is what I told you I was going to go. I was going to be with you through the waters, uh, make a path in the mighty seas. Or, or, I was going to make a pass through the waters, a pass through the rivers, and walk through the fires. And God is telling Israel this later on. He says, now look at what I did. I made a path through the mighty seas a way through the waters, a path through the mighty seas, and snuffed out the fire like a wick. So it, it doesn't, we don't catch it really clearly when we read Hebrew poetry, but God is going in these components of three all the way down to show Israel that I keep my promises. I have been here with you. I was here with you in the past, I am with you now. But don't worry about the past because I was with you when you were going through it. I am going to be with you now. I will be with you in the future. I have always been with you. I, I, I saved you from sl slavery. Remember what I did. Remember the mighty sight of millions of people walking through the Red Sea. How the waters were kept away from you. You, how it snuffed out Egypt like a flame when you went through the fires. Remember the pain and suffering and how, and how, was, uh, and how I was with you through it all. Remember that. Then, then, G, then, then, then this, is, this, is, this is the greatest. I, I, I've been studying Isaiah 43 for two weeks. There's another section of Isaiah 43. I, I'm like, hey, I love poetry all of a sudden. <laughs> this, this, this stuff's great. He says this. This is great. This is great. He says, he's this, he says this about the past. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Yeah, but God's going to... Here, 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 here is the thing, okay, about the past. The past is the past. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, but God might judge me for the past. What does God say? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Why would God condemn us for something we did in the past when he offers us forgiveness and, and redemption, and we took that forgiveness and redemption, grace, and he then says, when we get to heaven, remember what you did back on August 14th, 1932, for some of you old people. <laughs> and oh, oh, I didn't ask for forgiveness because I swore. Look, everything that Israel did, he is saying for God. God is saying through Isaiah, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. This word forget means to put out of your mind, not to remember, not to recall. The former things is the first thing. The, the former things is from the very 
first thing you did wrong, forget about it because I have. God is not going to tell us to forget about something and then bring it up to us and break one of his laws. Leave all those mistakes, memories, and the pain in the past. All that stuff keeps popping up, and we have to learn how to keep in the past. Forget about it. Do not bring it up again. Leave it in the past. That's why it's okay not to tell people about past sins, because the past is the past. Second, or third, I'm sorry, third. He says this. This is, this is so awesome. He says, what does he say? He says, okay, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Now watch this, all right? We read it, but you guys just read right past it, all right? This is so exciting. See, I am doing a new thing. Now, that exclamation point is there not because English people want to make it more resound. It means that they are emphasizing these words. See, I, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? Do you not get it? Aren't you experiencing it? Look what's happening. Don't you see that where you're at? I'm forgetting the past, and I am going to do a new thing. It's now going to spring up. It's going to sprout up like grass and grow. Something new and beautiful is about to have it happen. This word, perceive it. Okay, do you not know? Can't you see what's going on? Can't you feel what I'm doing? Because the past tells us it can't be done. And God is saying, Put the past in the past. Yes, I know it. the past hurt is painful. We're going to work through that. It isn't about putting down your pain because that's what we do too many times as humans is we put away the pain because we don't want to deal with it. He says, I will heal your pain. You just put it away and look forward. See, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. I hear our new opportunities in your life. There are new experiences that you're going to have in your life. And, and if you're James, <laughs> you know what James says? And there's new pain you're going to have in your life. Isn't this wonderful? I am going to do this new thing. He wants us to grow in a way so that he can do something new in us. And then Isaiah kind of starts talking about letting the past go. Not letting it define you. There are some things in the past that will repeat itself. If you're hungry, you're going to eat. It's going to repeat itself. Okay? I'm hungry. I've learned, I've learned about food really good last year. Okay? I get hungry. I eat. Okay? Guess what's going to happen? I'm going to get hungry again. And I'm going to eat again. There are some things that the past is going to repeat. Okay? If I, if I trip over, a, if I trip over a, a rock, I'm going to fall. If I trip over that rock again, I'm going to fall. It's going to repeat. But hunger is, is something that has to always repeat. I've learned this. When I'm hungry and I eat right, my sugar levels stay low. When I'm hungry and I eat wrong, my sugar levels go up. Why? It's not the hunger, it's not the past experience, it's how we deal with it. It's what we do with it. There are things in the past that we can't take back. There are things in the past that people are going to constantly remind us of. There is nothing we can do about it. Isaiah says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I am going to make a way when those things come up, and I'm going to make a way so that you can overcome them. Just don't let the past define you. I don't care what any of you have done in the past. It does not define you. We are not defined by this world. We are not defined by our past. We are not def defined by our mistakes. We are defined by the one and only true God. He says this. He, he goes on and he says this. this is, I like this part. Um. 
It, it, well, I like this part because it's not, it's not up there, but I, I like this part. He says, um, the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Not for them. Get this, get this. The wild animals honor me and the jackals and the owls because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. They're not honoring God because he provides for them. <laughs> they are honoring God because he provided water and, he, and, and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. The animals of this world are praising God and honor God because he is taking care of us. Everything that God is doing is because of us. The animals honor God because he right now is caring for us. He's a making a way through the pain of life, a path. He is going to snuff out the fire in our lives. Yes, it might be painful, but he wants to do a new thing. Don't let the situations define you. Move on. Become a better person. Do something new. And he says, he's doing all this so that the people I form for myself, that they may, that they may proclaim my praise. He's doing all of this so that we can then say, praise God. The only way I got through this is because of God. And if someone brings it up to you and says, did you remember what you said to me back then? Yes, I do. And praise God, I'm not that person anymore. Praise God, he's forgiven me. Now you have to. And there comes a time, even, even you know, Tanya and I have, we, we, we work on this more and more in our 30 years of living a life of forgiveness. We don't say to each other, do you remember when you said this back Four days before our wedding. <laughs> yeah, I do. Isn't it great? I'm not that person anymore. Praise God. I teach my kids, and Tanya and I try to practice this. Forgive and move on. Yep, I hurt you. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. Shouldn't have done that. Let's move on. Takes away all that pain, all that suffering. Yeah, my house burned down. I know that's a little hard, but I got a lot of work to do. It's going to be painful. But you know what? Praise God. I wasn't in it. Praise God. You know, 2020, glad we went through it. It's not unprecedented. I hate that word that these are unprecedented times because they don't know what it was like 2,000 years ago. They don't know what it was like 6,000 years ago. They don't know what it was like when the plague hit Israel. They, don't, they weren't around. It, these are not unprecedented times. Okay, look, Christ is not returning because they stormed and had an issue with the Capitol building. Okay, this is not a sign of him returning. It's a sign of people just doing weird, radical, weird stuff like we all do. Okay, but you know what they're going to do? They're going to define people because of actions of our past. Now you are this. You are that. And we have to quit defining ourselves for the past and defining people by the past. You know what? I made a mistake. You're right. Move on. Praise God. He forgave me. Ex expect, finally, expect the future to be amazing. When we get past, when we leave the past in the past and, and, and God says, look, Look, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm about to do an amazing thing. I'm about to do something, make a, do something new. I'm going to do something that's even better. What he was telling Israel is, hey, look, don't worry about what happened in the past. Yes, you were in slavery. Yes, you were in bondage. Yes, the Persians are going to take over you. Yes, all of this stuff is happening to you. But don't get so caught up in the past of what happened in the present and what might happen in the future. Because, because I am going to do a new thing. I am going to do something new in you. I am going to send my son, Jesus Christ, who's going to bring the Holy Spirit into our lives. 
and we're going to be able to get through and move away from our past. And the past is no longer going to define who we are, but we're going to move forward each day as a child of God who is doing a new thing in me today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And I am going to be that voice for God to say, hey, you're right. The, the, the world is crazy. People are nuts, but praise God, his Redeemer came. And now I can live and be a new person. I can live above the pain. I can live past the pain. Get this. Being a Christian doesn't mean that the pain is being taken away. It means you know how to live with it and you see the future, the future. You will know that God is alive and he's going to work and do an amazing thing. I am going, I am about to do a new thing. Can't you perceive it? Can't you see it? Something new and amazing is going to happen. Are you afraid of your past? Are there things in your past that you just don't think God is going to forgive you for and, and you're going to have to spend a, a millennia in heaven trying to convince God that you didn't mean to do it? That's not how it works. We need to let things in the past go. I'm going to sing a song and we're going to have a moment of, of silence, a quiet time. And if there's stuff in the past, like I was wondering how I wanted to end this thing and, I thought about, you know, if you have past mistakes that keep popping up, put them on a sheet of paper and let them burn. Problem is, is that you, you take them back. You know, I burned a sheet of paper, I didn't burn the problem. You are the one who is going to have to say, God, that thing, those things. And just because you might have a longer list than me doesn't make you any worse than me. That's what I like about God. My sin is no worse <laughs> or softer than your 5,000 sins. A sin is a sin is a sin is a sin. And if that thing is bouncing back in your faith in God, I can't get past this. It's time that you start talking to God. On a, I'm giving this back to God. I'm giving this back to God. I'm giving this back to God. Tomorrow morning, I'm giving this back to God. I'm giving this back to God. When, when those thoughts come up in your head about what people said or did to you, no, 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 I gave that back to you. I give this back to you. I give it back to you. It doesn't define me. I won't let it define me. The past is a past. God is doing a new thing. If there are things in your past that you're struggling with, make today a time where you're going to finally just put them away and let God reign. I'm going to sing a song and have a time of quiet prayer to give those things in the past up to people, up to God. Whether you've done them, whether people have done them to you, whether they just happen, just let them say, God, I'm giving this to you. It's no longer going to define me. It's, it's no longer going to be who I am. I am a child of God. If jealous for me like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and I
mentions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. morning, talk to God, lift up to him those things that keep haunting you, keep coming back from the past. Give him over to God and let him deal with him. Help us to put the past in the past, to leave it there. Sometimes the pain will continue, and we need to learn how to deal with that. But Lord, the events of those past don't define who we are. Let us move into the new thing you are doing. children of God and that you will care for us.
touch those in our in this church. Touch those who are watching online. Be with our nation, Lord. This week we have a board meeting on Tuesday, and uh, don't 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 complain and frown because you haven't met with me since uh, it was when um, uh, November, December, October, the last time we sat down and met together. Okay, so yes, you haven't had your time with Pastor Raymond, which I know you all love. I can see how. Uh, <coughs> Becky McCarty is really overjoyed <laughs> by these comments <laughs> and everything. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we do have, we do have, a, it is an important board meeting. There are some decisions. We will be making a decision and, and trying to come up with a, uh, an understanding of how we are going to proceed between now and, and into 2021 and what that's going to look like. Just be patient. There will be a plan in place of how we reopen up our church and how we will reopen our ministries. There may be a little delay in it, but just be patient. We will get there. Our church will be open again. We will be ministering and reaching out to people. Uh, we, we have a plate in the back if you want to give your tithes and offerings on your way out. And since you heard a tremendous message, you want to double whatever you give because that's how much it was. That's how good it was. So remember, we're going to release you one, one person, one, one row at a time. Timothy is all ready to go out there, and I have to decide whether I let you off right at 12 or sing another song. They already sat down, so this is what we're going to do. Be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord my God is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. Enjoy this day that God has created for you.